Hi, I'm Haley Thomas, Farm Sanctuary board member, wellness and compassion activist, author, and CEO. My work focuses on self-care, activism, community work, and nourishing our individual and collective evolution, because I truly believe that we are better together. Today, we are honoring love, community, and the power of compassion to create a better world. We're going to be taking you behind the scenes at our sanctuaries in Watkins Glen, New York, and Acton, California, for a look at the loving relationships between our rescued residents. We'll hear their stories of survival, the relationships they formed, plus the healing connections they share with our dedicated team on the ground. You'll also meet activists and change makers whose work providing love and care within their communities proves that the bonds between us are powerful and that when we put compassion first, truly amazing things can happen. Time and time again, we see the power of love and community to foster real change in the world and create sanctuary for all. Thank you so much for being on this journey with us and enjoy the event. mash all over the
Otto was born on a production farm that raised and bred sheep for meat. Otto was deemed a bummer lamb. He was born very sick and he was unable to nurse from his mother. A woman who lived nearby uh, regularly rescues bummer lambs and takes them back to her property, rehabilitates them so that they are able to reintegrate to the flocks. She reached out to us at Farm Sanctuary and we were able to meet her in Utah and he went straight up to UC Davis so that we could get more diagnostic work done for him. UC Davis diagnosed him with irreversible neurological issues. One of their suggestions for Otto was to have him live with another sheep. They were hoping that if Otto lived with someone else that he would mimic the other friend eating hay, drinking water, and hopefully would be able to possibly learn how to do that himself. Squid was born into an FFA program, Future Farmers of America, where students breed animals in order to show them and then they are eventually auctioned into the meat industry. When Squid was a few days old, his mother accidentally trampled on his rear left leg, resulting in a break right above his hock. So when Squid came to the farm, we ended up landing on trying a wheelchair for him. And the second we put him in, it was an instant success. He really got the hang of it very quickly. He realized how fast he could go. And so he would just race around everywhere. We started referring to him as Hot Wheels. Hello, my happy. So we had Squid already at our facility down here and we thought that was a perfect fit and Otto and Squid became fast friends. <laughs> Sometimes when we refer to Squid and Otto together, we call them by their couple name, which is Squatto. It's very cute. <laughs> Sheep naturally like to form subgroups, so it's their own little social circles that they tend to do most of their activities with, like sleeping together, eating together, playing together. We, of course, see that in our relationship with Squid and Otto. They're very close to each other. Otto is now able to drink on his own. He, he first would like put his nose into the water bucket. Uh, sometimes it would go up his nose and he'd do a little uh, sneeze into the water bucket. But now we actually are seeing him drink in the water and actually swallow it. And that was most likely due to really watching Squid do that himself as well. It's very heartwarming to see a sheep with mobility issues and a sheep with neurological issues come so far in such a short amount of time. But that is the power of love and that is the power of sanctuary. And Squid and Otto are truly better together. I'm Salamatu Mababi. I am a chef and multimedia artist and the founder and director of Black Feast. I'm Annika Hanstein Aizora and I'm one of the co leads for Black Feast. The original idea for Black Feast probably came from being in Portland, being in a space that was lacking in cultural and racial diversity and really wanting to see something that was for black people, by black people. Also, you know, me being in the culinary world for at that point like 10 years, I wanted to create a meal that was accessible. And I think a big thing about Black Feast was the sliding scale pricing, you know, that you can come to like a four course dinner and you can pay five dollars. Black Feast is a culinary space, but it's also an art space. Like we're working directly with black artists to share their work in a space that's for and by black people. Um, Make it sound so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. I'm like, oh, it I want to be a part of that. It is. <laughs>
when you're making art and you're thinking about who is this art for? Where is this art going to exist? You can do the same with food. And I wanted the answer to that to be that it's for black people. It's open to everyone. But also, when white people come into that space, there might be a feeling of discomfort. That feeling of discomfort is something that black people know. We've known it for our whole lives. You know, when you go to the store and you're like, none of these combs are for my hair. <laughs> yeah, none of these exactly foundations mean, yeah. are for my skin. Ten shades. Yeah. And they stop at beige. <laughs> <laughs> We're told that you know, the places that we exist in, the stores that we go to, the products that we buy, that they're for everyone. And we see that, that that's not the case. Our experience is often so other. And so creating these spaces that are really for black people is essential. In terms of the type of food. It's always different based on the artist's work, but it's always plant-based, it's always gluten-free. A lot of that is because cooking for over 10 years for people, I want to do something that everyone can participate in. Before COVID hit, we were doing sit-down dinner experiences, and the plan was to continue doing them across the country. But then with COVID, we shifted and saw Matsu thought of this love letters concept, which was creating a love letter that I wrote and pairing it with a dessert that he made and just giving it for free to whoever wanted it seeing folks being able to gather to get this really joyous thing that's like made with care and intention was really powerful. Our next one is coming up in February for Valentine's Day, which is my favorite holiday. It's, all, it's also my favorite holiday. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to do love letters for Valentine's Day because it feels very fitting. We're going to create an altar, which is an altar for black love and folks are gonna send in pictures of their loved ones and their sweeties, and it's gonna be real cute. This is like a celebration of like joy as an act of resistance, and by, by resistance, it really, we really mean taking up space with your joy. You deserve rest, like you deserve care, like you deserve intention and love and pleasure. Like I think that's really something that we wanted to do with Love Letters because it happened during the uprisings. And so we were thinking about where can we be creating like rest and pleasure for people in this moment because that's also needed for your sustainability and movement work. So I think like that was a really big thing that's important to us, which is also with Valentine's Day and celebrating all kinds of love that's why it's my favorite. Platonic love, friendship love. Yeah, we have so much love. Yeah. For Bella and Vector, every day is Galentine's Day. They were both born with a condition called cross beak where their upper and lower parts of their beaks don't align properly. This can make it difficult for them to get enough to eat and requires that they have special feeds provided. Bella came to us in May of 2016 from a small farm. Because of her cross beak, she had trouble eating and was small in size and often picked on by the other chickens. The farmer didn't believe that he'd be able to sell her and so he reached out to Farm Sanctuary to see if we could take her. Vector came to us in 2020 an employee at a feed store was concerned about her getting enough to eat with her crossbill. After bringing her home, Vector blossomed under her care and matured into a bold and a bit spoiled hen. A few years later, the guardian decided to return to school and knew she'd have less time to tend to Vector. First introductions with Bella and Vector led to some ruffled feathers. Vector was used to having all the attention and didn't want to share the spotlight with her mini-me. Chickens are socially complex beings. They have deductive reasoning capabilities. They know who is and who isn't in their social group. 
When presented with unfamiliar chickens, they're usually apprehensive to spend time around them at first, but over time grow accustomed to each other. That's how it was with Bella and Vector. They soon adjusted to their new arrangement, the affection blossomed into a deep friendship, and now these lovebirds are seldom apart. Bella and Vector now take all their meals together, often sharing the same bowls. When they're done, they lovingly clean the food off of each other's faces for an extra snack. At night, they perch and snuggle close. Bella and Vector are better together. Sanctuary is a space of refuge and tranquility, where life is sacred and trauma is healed, where humans and other animals are free from harm and live in peace with dignity. <laughs> Through the seasons, Sanctuary has allowed us to witness so much about the emotional and cognitive lives of animals. We have watched, we have listened, and we have learned. Take the sheep barn. If ever in need of a moment of peace and grounding, members of the Farm Sanctuary team and visitors alike have retreated to this special place to spend time among the sanctuary's most mild-mannered, tender residents. There's no denying the comfort and joy pigs find in a communal nest of clean straw snuggling together side by side, nose to nose. Pigs demonstrate emotional contagion, meaning when one pig is happy after foraging and finding a tree, her friends share her joy by nuzzling her and playing with her more. At Farm Sanctuary, there's no act quite so full of love as the preparing and sharing of food. Whether we're sowing acres of fresh pasture for the ruminants to graze in the spring and summer, or stockpiling tons of hay for a long winter ahead, the act of sharing food goes far beyond satisfying a biological need. It's a bonding ritual a building block of trust that nurtures the relationships between our rescued residents and our caregivers.
While many visitors arrive at Farm Sanctuary with an established sympathy for brown-eyed cows and woolly sheep, few depart without a fresh appreciation for the warm, nurturing way of birds who possess strong personalities, form friendships, and have a wide range of interests. Turkeys, for example, have a language all their own. They use about 30 different vocalizations, from mating calls to predator warnings, to communicate with one another. Right now, Lady Sif is probably communicating disappointment with her rap treatment for Bumblefoot. But with friend Pamela by her side, the process isn't so bad. The relationships between turkey hens run deep. In the wild, mother turkeys will even team up to watch all of their babies as a group. Cows are among our most contemplative residents. They are deeply social animals and highly maternal, the perfect example of better together. They have a strong need for social interaction. In fact, research has confirmed what we have seen with our own eyes. When a cow is feeling stressed, she will actively seek out her friends for emotional support. They also form grooming partnerships, just like chimpanzees, and make decisions that benefit other members of the group. And devastatingly, when a mother cow and her baby are separated in the dairy industry, they both will cry out for one another for hours. While scientists don't go so far to call that love, we can all recognize the sound of a broken heart. For our older animals, Sanctuary provides a safe and loving place to live out their golden years. Farmed animals in the industry are rarely given the opportunity to grow old, but here we have animals that live well into their teens and 20s, including Jean here, who is 16 years young. These older animals, as well as animals with special healthcare needs, are given space away from the more boisterous herd to heal, rest, and find companionship. In fact, if an animal needs to go to the hospital, we'll often send along a companion for support because we all know a doctor's visit is less scary when a friend is by your side. Over the years, we've seen our residents experience so much. We've grieved alongside them when they've lost dear friends. We've shared joy with them as we watch them find lifelong companions. We've seen what so many have been unable to see, that these animals have deep emotional lives similar to our own. We meet all beings where they are on their journey with care and without judgment because we know we are better together. My name is Kimberly Barnes. I go by Kimberly Renee on the interwebs. I am the founder of Might Be Vegan. And last year I launched a really important initiative called Food Love. As a result of um, brand partnerships, we're able to deliver directly to the doorstep of people in need, fresh plant-based foods. Once I started to do research around factory farming and the impact that that has on the environment. And when I started to dig more deeply into the lack of access that so many people have and how we could solve a lot of food insecurity if we focused on vegetable production, I think that's what made me think differently about what I consumed in a way that just wasn't focused on health. So when I decided to go plant-based, go vegan, I found myself struggling to find people who look like me, who understood the types of foods that I prefer. So 
I created Might Be Vegan initially to create a safe space for people to come to learn and to try veganism. And that's why I named the business Might Be Vegan. So that, hey, you might not be yet, or you might be, but it's okay. Like, let's just, let's figure it out together. Let's try. And so what you're looking at with Might Be Vegan is the unpacking of all of that and putting something together that not only gives me the space to be the creative person that I am, but then also gives other people room to, to try, to learn, to experience. But then there's the philanthropic side of this, which is how can we help people who don't have as many options as we do and that's kind of where food love comes in we're starting to see just how bad COVID is hitting our community people of color were dying at twice the rate of their white counterparts that startled me because I said I know for a fact that this virus is not racist so we need to figure out the why behind this and the why was multifaceted, it was layered. Because of the types of jobs that we often have, it's because of our reasonable, because of history, mistrust of physicians. It's because of our pre-existing conditions. And it's the pre-existing conditions that was an alert for me. So many of us have grown up consuming foods that are not good for us, not because we made that as a choice, but because that choice was thrust upon us, because of our redlined neighborhoods that got us to a position where we're living in food swamps. So when you put all of that together, I realized that the reason that we have these pre-existing conditions is because of systemic oppression, systemic racism. And I said, this is a great opportunity right now to introduce people to healthy eating and then also support them. So what I did next was just try to figure out what I could do for my computer. What if I could match people who are in need with people who had excess, people who had food, and figure out how I could get that food delivered directly to them? That's how the idea of Food Love was born. The way that Food Love works is we are connectors. Our job is to connect the people who are in need with the brands that are providing the food. Food Love and I share this belief that wellness is a right, it's not a privilege. And we both believe really strongly that plant-based eating is an enormous component of that wellness. Um, and so I think really of all of the communities, those experiencing food insecurity, um, really need this product more than perhaps other communities because they just don't have as many options. The way that we decide what goes in the box depends on medical conditions. We may get people who are dealing with hypertension. We may get some who are dealing with obesity and they want to lose weight. It all just depends on the information that we receive from our advocates. Ideally, food should be your medicine. Now I know that food is, does not solve every illness that everyone can ever have, but there are certain things that I think, especially in the black community, that we should not have to deal with. We should not have to deal with so much type two diabetes. We should not have to deal with so much obesity because at the end of the day, if I can solve that illness with some carrots, some broccoli and some lettuce, then for me, I should, we should have never been in that, in that position in the first place. In order for us to do what we do as Food Love, there's no way that I could have accomplished this as an individual, no way. Because not only are we sending food to people, we're also sending them materials that help them to go vegan if they're not already vegan. Because I didn't want to just send them food with nothing else. I wanted to send them food to say, okay, we've reached you, now hey, guess what? So if you want to eat more vegetables after this, let me show you some tips. Let me give you some recipes. Let me refer you to some additional food resources. So the only way to get that done is through partnerships, partnerships with brands, partnerships with social workers, partnerships with those caseworkers, that entire advocate network that we're talking about. When I talk to people um, and ask them if they have enough food to eat at home and it's like, yeah, I guess. And I am able to tell them about Food Love and I can get a free box of food shipped to your house with no strings attached. And that makes a big difference too for people who aren't feeling well. 
and don't have the time and energy to cook. And it's so nice for them to have those prepared healthy meals. A lot of folks that I work with are used to going to food banks, getting canned goods, things that are um, quick, cheap, easy and available. And so having access to something that um, comes right to them that's healthier um, and feels more like a real meal rather than canned beans, <laughs> all the canned beans in the world. So um, I think a lot of people have appreciated that. All of these people are coming together these groups, these organizations are coming together to make something amazing. There's a quote that says, giving precedes receiving, and my gifts to others precede the universe's gifts to me. Being able to see that just in life and how much goodness has come to me this year without even trying, I know is a reflection of the work and the energy and the passion and compassion that I've had for people who are in need. Emin and Wyatt have been through a lot together. They came here in 2018 from a small farm in New York where they, with about 85 other pigs, were forced to live in a deep layer of their own feces in total darkness. Thanks to a collaboration with the Cattaraugus County SPCA, we were able to rescue Wyatt and Emmett and many of their other friends from the horrible conditions they were living in. Sadly, the farm that they were rescued from was somewhere we had gone before in 2002, where we had rescued 125 animals uh, who were living in neglect. The pig's owner received three years of probation. Soon after, he was clearly at business as usual. We had to you know, save all of the pigs that were living in those terrible conditions once again. Some of the medical issues that these pigs faced when they came in included uh, Wyatt here, who had a massive hernia and had been checked out by our vets at Cornell, who believed that he had been, uh, you know, beaten and kicked. Emmett was left with terribly heavy parasite loads that did damage to his digestive tract, leaving him really unable to eat or absorb any nutrients. Through it all, these two were by each other's side. And now, two years later, they made a full recovery and remain the best of friends. Friendship is really important to pigs. Pigs are extremely intelligent creatures who can you know, tell different pigs from each other based on sight, sound, um, smell, uh, and even touching each other. Play is also a very important part of pig behavior. Pigs will play with different objects in their environment. They'll run around the pasture um, with bursts of excitement. They'll snuggle up with each other. Um, they'll wrestle with each other when they're excited. At the farm where they were raised, Wyatt and Emmett weren't able to exercise any of these behaviors. Now, they're able to run, play, snuggle, and express themselves in any way they please. These two guys have really been through a lot together. We're so grateful that they've had each other to heal together with lots of love, and lots of snuggles, and lots of play. Wyatt and Emmett are better together.
Thank you so much for joining us for the first event of our 35th anniversary year. We are honored to have shared these important stories with you today, highlighting acts of love within the farm sanctuary community and among our animal residents. Featuring people and organizations who are stepping up to serve their own communities and to support others. Jean, as you're thinking about the program today, what are some of your reflections and memories, some of your favorite moments of working in community? No, well, thank you very much, Megan. And, you know, over the years, Farm Sanctuary has been so fortunate to have so many dedicated, caring people step up. You know, whether it was way back in the 1980s when people actually volunteered to go to stockyards to document conditions, to people who are now involved in the political process. And, you know, we really are better together. We are a community. And when we work together, we can do some great things. Thank you so much to Haley Thomas for your compassionate leadership and participation today. Thank you, Kimberly Renee, and everyone involved with Food Love for being part of this event and for modeling the power of working together to provide community care and support. Thank you to Salamatu and Annika of Black Feast for sharing the important work that you're doing. Your love for your community and the spaces and experience you've shared and created out of love inspire us. And of course, to our sanctuary team. Thank you for the love and care that you provide to each and every one of our sanctuary residents every day. These individuals have shared with us their inspiring work providing care for others and how kindness and love can empower, support, and build deeper connections in our communities. We are so grateful for your support. And if you're looking for ways to further resource our work, I would encourage you to check out our Better Together Valentine's Day Adopt a Farm Animal campaign, where you can sponsor one of the three animal pairs that you met today, Squid and Otto, Bella and Vector, or Emmett and Wyatt. Each adoption comes with a certificate that you can keep for yourself or send to somebody as a gift for Valentine's Day. It's a great way to reach people, to raise awareness, to spread compassion and love at this special time. If you're interested, at the bottom of the event page, there is a link. And if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link in the description. So thank you very much for caring. Because we're celebrating our 35th year at Farm Sanctuary, we're excited to close the program today with an invitation to our Power of Sanctuary 35th Anniversary Celebration, which will be a virtual event held on Saturday, September 25th. So please mark your calendars. More information and details will be coming soon. Throughout the year, we'll be celebrating the amazing events that have occurred over the past 35 years leading up to our 35th anniversary Power of Sanctuary Celebration in September. I hope you'll join us and you'll tune in for these various highlights and updates over the course of the year.